Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Edelmetallmesse here in Munich, day one. And my next interview partner is Chris Chang, the director uh, to operate development of Canada Nickel. Welcome and good morning. Well, welcome, thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Thanks for taking the time. And I think it's the first time here in Munich, right? Yeah, it's right? first time. Great. Welcome then again. Yeah, beautiful city. <laughs> That's great. I'm a shareholder of your company. And uh, yeah, not happy with the share price, that's for sure, but I mean, who is happy these days with a share price? But anyhow, um, I think nickel is something which is uh, in front of a big, big story like lithium. Uh, maybe you want to comment shortly on that. Yeah, no, I think uh, nickel is a great place to be, given the transition we're seeing from the traditional energy to the battery movement here. Um, we forecast pretty uh, meaningful growth. Every couple of years, every 10, 15 years, you get a super cycle, which we believe we're going to enter one in the mid-2025 timeline. And um, you know our, our forecast kind of estimates that you, by 2030 you will need about 5.1 million tons of nickel, versus the 2.8 million tons now, which is a good double or close to a double. Yeah. And if you believe That's what a lot. it is quite a bit, <laughs> and if you believe what Valley says, which has a you know call a six million ton demand forecast by. Uh, 2030, that, that's a pretty good double from here as well. Super. I think one of the big projects for the future is your project, Crawford Project, but you have also more like with Reed and Deloro. Um, let's get started with Crawford. What is the status today? You have already a big resource on it. So on what are you working as I think your feasibility study comes soon, right? Yeah, we, so we had our PEA announced last year. We updated our resource in the middle of this year in May, uh, which we doubled the resource. So it's pretty big now at 3.5 million tons of measured and indicated resources. Uh, puts us to a top five nickel sulfide mine globally on both a production and a uh, resource size basis. And uh, by year end, we're going to have a feasibility study out. A um, couple of optimization improvements that we're going to see in the form of the recoveries. Um, we're going to have some PGM and cobalt credits added. And uh, we're going to have some uh, uh, again, more material through the mine plan because we doubled it. So we're looking to have between 1.3 to 1.8 million tons of material through this mine plan, on, on which we believe we'll be the upper end of that. Okay, super. Um, so that sounds like a big game plan, I would call it. Yeah, I mean, feasibility is feasibility. Then you can go for a, a uh, investment decision or construction decision. Um, I'm pretty sure that you have already a nice lineup of uh, big companies who are looking at you, right? Well, we, we have been working on a few things. I mean, we've been pretty proactive in trying to get off-take work done and, and even looking for strategic investments and such. So we, we are proactive in that, on that basis. I've done a lot of, we've done a lot of marketing around these particular um, goals and strategies. Um, you know, can't comment on how far along we are, but we are hopefully you know, getting closer to the line. Okay, super. I think one absolutely strategic advantage you have, aside that you are in the middle of Canada, in the heart of Canada, uh, I think Glencore is like 40, 50 kilometers from you away, right? Oh, it's even closer. Yeah, yeah. even closer. Yeah. Okay, super. But I think one of the biggest advantages what I saw in your presentation is the net zero nickel you could produce. And I think even you will have carbon credits to sell in the future. Can you give us a bit uh, background on that, please? Right. One key characteristic of our mine is the ultramafic serpentine uh, characteristic, which naturally has a sequestering process that you've kind of alluded to. So um, we've developed a process whereby after 36 hours, we become net zero. And after six days, we can start generating credits for sale. And how we do this is by, you know, the rock has a, uh, it forms a magnet site over, which grabs a CO2 molecule and naturally sequesters it. Um, by leaving, basically what we've done is we've crushed the rock, we've agitated it, and then we've injected CO2 into the process, whereby it expedites this whole sequestering uh, process and we can be we'll able to generate credits after um, six days, roughly. Okay, super. So that means you have net zero emissions when you produce the nickel and you can store in addition. Right. And uh, I think you have uh, then like 18 million tons yeah, over so the whole life of mine Correct. so if i i think today is uh, 35 euros in germany i think it's one ton per co2 Let, let's take 30 dollars we talk about 540 million dollars already so that's like a, a by uh, <laughs> not, not a byproduct credit even that's just a, a byproduct gift right it's it's a nice <laughs> little benefit we have yeah. on you know whether it be for helping us de-risk the project in the financing streaming process or whether we you know, spin that out to a subco, or whether we, uh, you know, put a royalty around, um, you know, what we generate. There's very many options, and it's a nice little benefit we get from just the natural characteristic of a rock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you give us a bit more of an idea? I know the feasibility is coming up, but can you give us an idea how large is the project in the worldwide context? What do you think could be a capex you need? 
Right, so uh, our project is very large. Again, 3.5 million tons of MNI is about a top five nickel sulfide project. Um, I think our last number for CapEx was 1.2 billion US. Uh, 2 billion. 1.2 yeah. billion. 1.2, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, uh, we're going to have an updated number when the feasibility comes out. Um, and again, you know, the industry's ex experienced a bit of cost inflation, but we think we have a pretty good handle on wh where we can be by then. Um, and w right now our project is large again. We have a 42 square foot kilometer of not only Crawford, but all the regional stuff around it. And Crawford's about 1.6 kilometers of, uh, of that drilling. So uh, again, it's very large in and, and size and scale. Yeah, so 1.2 billion, that's say okay with the inflation maybe at 1.4, 1.5, but that is makeable in that size. What, what could be a realistic uh, production scenario in tons of, uh, let's say tons nickel per annum? What do you think? What, just hypothetical, I know for the regulators, forward-looking statement, but what, what are we talking about whatever, 10, 20, 30,000 tons of nickel a year? Well at peak production we're doing about 42 million tons. And uh, we'll hopefully try to get it bigger sooner in our next update. Oh, no, sorry, not um, real nickel, I mean. The, the end product nickel, what, what you want to produce. Oh, uh, you mean in terms of a mat or a sulfate or what? Yeah, exactly, yeah, so or concentrate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to be producing concentrate at this point, and then uh, we're looking for downstream opportunities where we potentially could make uh, a mat out of it, a nickel mat or a sulfate, depending on, the, we're working with different partners now to see what kind of needs they have, and we're going to you know try to work on the downstream to get it to the, the end product that you need it into. Okay, okay, fine. So, but you would, uh, let's say, not dominate the world market, but you would be a nice part of it. We would be a significant contributor. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. So, I could imagine that your project would be something for the Valles, the BHPs, the Rio Tintos in this world, right? I, I mean, they would be users of, of stuff, stuff like this. Uh, we, are, we are talking to, obviously, we, we've been working on that strategy for quite a bit. Um, but yes, they, they would be natural. Use yeah. For that. Okay. So the feasibility shall come out January, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how much is in the bank, and what are then after the feasibility? What are your next immediate plans? So we have about 22 million available capital to use. We recently take on a US 10 million dollar ORMET loan uh, to add on in case we need to do some work that's post feasibility earlier because we don't want to miss this winter drilling season where the rock is still frozen, the ground is frozen. We can do a lot more work. Um, in terms of yeah, after the feasibility, we're hopefully uh, we're going to have more exploration news, more permitting news, uh, and more project risky news overall. And you'll probably see some more um, whether we do you know a couple of land acquisitions here and there in the region, or uh, more information around um, you know, the net zero stuff. I think you'll get, we'll get pretty good news flow in the next little bit. Or you could be taken over. Uh, I mean. Too early. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully not at these prices, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I'm looking forward more to five dollars, not to one fifty, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me as well. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Super. Okay, perfect. So, who are your largest shareholders today? What is institutional? Well, we. I mean, between management and, and friends and family, I guess we we have a bit, we know where forty percent of the stock sits. Um, in terms of the largest shareholders that are disclosed, we had, uh, I think Conway was in, uh, is disclosed with the holding. Uh, Conway from Switzerland. Yes, ah. that's correct. Uh, Manulife is disclosed as well as Invesco. Yeah. Those are the three disclosures in, uh, on Bloomberg that you'll see. Uh, in the last financing, I mean, there was quite a number of institutions that we had in the $51 million raise in March. Um, I mean, I'm not sure who's disclosed and who's, who's in the registry anymore, but mm. um, there was over 20 institutions in the name. Okay, super. So it looks like you're well protected that we are not losing you too cheap. I, I hope <laughs> we don't lose you too cheap. <laughs> that would be good. Super. Yeah. And then we look forward to your feasibility study, Great. I would say. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank Chris, you. thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Chris Chung, the Director of Corporate Development of Canada Nickel. Yeah, you heard it. Uh, amongst the fifth largest nickel deposits in the world. And uh, we are only talking about 1.6 kilometers where the, the uh, resource of today is. But they have over 42 kilometers of uh, strike lengths here. And uh, I think it's a uh, yeah, fantastic company. It's why I'm a shareholder of, of course, especially at those prices. It's uh, really fantastic to have a look at uh, this company. And nickel is for sure. We need it for the batteries. We need it for the, a green, renewable future, for an e-mobility future. And Canada Nickel is definitely hot with that fantastic project. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Munich from the Eagle Metallmesse. Check out Canada Nickel.